Hey everybody, it's John. It is Dry Fire Monday, sponsored by the Mantis X and the new X10. We'll get to it in a little while. But one of the things that I hear all the time is, you know, your cold shot is most important because you're not going to be warmed up before your gunfight. But I actually have a reason that I kind of disagree with that assessment. If you do a daily warm up, I'm going to show you how I do mine. If you're frustrated with your shooting and your shooting performance, you need the Mantis X to help you to get to the next level of skills. It's definitely helped me. So there is some truth to this statement that says, hey, wait a minute, you don't get to warm up before your gunfight. So you know, you're not gonna get 50 rounds to kind of see how things go. It's gonna be your cold performance that matters. I don't disagree with that. That said, I do think daily dry fire can help us to kind of warm up. And I'm gonna show you before I go out into the world, I always give myself about 10 minutes, maybe even five sometimes, to do a quick warm up with my defensive handgun, do just a little bit of dry fire, particularly working on my draw to first shot. So then that way I know I can get the gun out quickly, get a first shot if I need to, and as I go about my day, I am at least somewhat warmed up. So you don't need a lot of tools for this. We're definitely going to use the Mantis X10 because it's got a really cool new feature on it uh, on a draw and holster analysis, which is really cool. I'll show it to you in a little bit. But really, you can use your smartphone and just use an app with a timer. I'm going to use my old school, you know, Pocket Pro 2. That works really well as well. And uh, the thing that I'm doing with this is when I start, okay, so the first couple things that I do is, is yes, you do this with your carry gun. So that means I'm going to unload it, right? So again, I'm very careful. I make sure this particular magazine is an unloaded one because I've been working a little bit. So I verify that my firearm is unloaded and shown clear because I don't want to put holes in walls and I certainly don't want to put holes in loved ones or in neighbors. So here's how I do that. I draw a firearm, drop the magazine out, lock the slide to the rear, then verify with my eyes and with feel. There's no rounds in the chamber. There is no magazine in the gun. I tend to look away as well see what else is going on in the world, re-verify again just so that I know I'm not missing it. Drop that slide. I like putting a magazine in it because there's just a little bit of a lip there and I feel like I get better on it so I use an empty for that. Put a magazine in, put the gun easily and safely back in the holster. Here's what I generally do. I start off with a couple of very slow, deliberate, perfect draws to first shot. So I'm just going to pick out my target in this particular room that I have just off to the right here and you or to my left, you're right, you'll be able to see um, I have a third scale IPSC target. And so I tend to pick that target because it's set at a distance from me where it's like a seven yard target. So if I can get an A zone hit there, I feel like I can get an A zone hit anywhere. So then I sit here from this position. Now I have had somebody recently on the channel go, oh, well, why are you starting here from the fig leaf position? Listen, guys, you can start from up here as well from what we call a a surrender position, right? I don't say a surrender position is my hands way up like this because that's not how I'm going to do that. If he says, hey, put your hands up, I'm going to be like, hey, man, I don't want any problems. Okay, dude, my hands are up. You got it. And this allows me to defend myself. It's a great martial arts position, great self-defense position. I can protect my head and neck, and I can also draw from there as well. So I can draw from here. I can draw from my hands down at my sides. If I do either one of these, then I'm going to, again, get at my belly button for my proprioceptive index. So if I'm here, I'm going to grab, grab the gun, drive the gun up. Up, see my dot and press my shot. If you don't have a red dot, then of course you will be seeing your front side. If I put my hands down at my side, which honestly I have almost, I, I'm trying to think in the main channel, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody draw from this kind of hands at side position. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody from this kind of non-set position of, oh, I'm not going to do anything and now I got to draw my firearm and go. Don't know that I've seen it. I, uh, maybe, but not a whole lot. But if I'm from here again, same thing, grab my, my uh, belly button, pull the shirt up, get my shot. Didn't have to go fast easily, safely reholster the firearm. Now, if I want to do that kind of the way that I tend to do it because it's fastest for me as I do a fig leaf, right? So that fig leaf is from here. Again, same thing. Do I see a lot of people drawing guns from here? No, I see people drawing guns from all kinds of positions though. So again, from here, nice and easy, no wasted motion, drive the gun out, see my front side, press the trigger, safely holster. Okay, so I've gotten to do a few of those. Now, here's where I start using my timer. So I might do five, six, 10 of those. Just, just real easy, just gonna sit here. Okay, man, it's cool. Hey, I don't want any problems, whatever. Dude looks away from me. Go get the gun, drive the gun out, press the shot when I see my dot. Did I go fast there? No, so nice and easy, draw my gun, drive this gun, see my sights. 
put the gun back away. Now again, I'm practicing all my fundamentals here, right? So I've kept my, my elbows nice and tight, so I haven't waved my elbows out here. It's something that I've seen. I'm not moving my shoulders around. We've done videos on that, so make sure you go watch those dry fire and live fire videos about maximizing the efficiency of your first shot. And as Scott Jedlinski, my coach says, you, you minimize unnecessary frenetic motion. And if you're sooner, you don't have to be faster. Simple as that. So again, I'm here. I don't move my shoulders. I'm not jerking around all over like this. I just pull this out of the way, get my gun out, draw it, press the trigger and go from there. Safely, carefully, easily holster. Now then, once I get out there, now I'm gonna grab my pocket timer and set it at a part time that works for you. So I am going to set here, um, I'm gonna start with a, just to show you kind of what that's gonna look like a 1.5 second draw to first shot. So this is a professional standard, right? So a professional standard of a 1.5 draw to first shot is what I would expect somebody who is a professional carrying a firearm. So that means certainly a law enforcement officer in any capacity in any kind, professional security guard, uh, a firearms trainer, somebody like that to be able to do with a consistent basis. 1.5 is an easy day, especially if you're carrying appendix, strong side too, but, but you know, if you're carrying strong side, same thing, right? Uh, okay, so we've got all that. Now let's let's see what we've got there great okay so we've got that very good all right so now we're feeling good about that now I'm just gonna get a beep here I'm gonna get that draw to first shot about 1.5 which is gonna just make me do all my fundamentals without any speed yep hit it right at the right time there now I didn't get it to actually see that because this is this timer and we'll see it in a little bit with the mantis but seeing this okay got it good let's get another one here 1.5. Okay, I was a little ahead there. I didn't want to be behind. Okay, cool. So if that's your speed, if you're a 1.5 person, you might start at 1.6, do three, four, five of those. Okay, so whatever speed that is, is normal for you. That's what you're going to do. Since that's a little bit slow for me because of just where I am, I'm gonna go ahead and speed that up a little bit and I'm gonna show you what I actually do. This is a 1.0 draw to first shot. Okay, so this is one flat, 1.0 1 we consider the black belt standard. It is the highest level that we expect a professional to be able to achieve in a draw to first shot, A zone, seven yards. And that is the, the you know, Modern Samurai Project black belt standard. When you get to Gabe White's Pistol Shooting Solutions class, that is his standard for a turbo pin. So this is, you're a rock star. I'm gonna tell you, 1.0 draw to first shot from uh, strong sides work uh, from appendix. It's not really as hard as you think. Let's see what that looks like. So again, I'm just warming up. I have done four or five draws to first shot from a, uh, you know, no timer whatsoever, take my time. And then I'm gonna do four or five draws to first shot at a pace that is not hard for me to do, but makes me work to make sure that I get my fundamentals there. Let's see how we do it. Yep, yep, felt good about that. Okay, go on the B, John, not the E. Yep, I'm there. Seeing my dot. Yeah, a little bit ahead there. Dot was a little bit to the right. It's okay, I'm gonna fix that now. So see, there's something that's interesting. Because my red dot was a little bit to the right, or if you're not a dot shooter, maybe you know your sights were a little bit off to the right, now I can go, oh, okay, wait a minute, let me correct that with a little bit more support hand pressure so that I get my dot right in the middle of the window like I like with this rep. Okay, saw that exactly like I wanted. Now what happens if you aren't seeing your dot or if you're out driving yourself? Again, this is a speed that's okay for me right now, but if that's too fast for you, back it off a little bit so then that way you're feeling it. One more. Yes, saw everything I needed to see there. Felt really good about it. Okay, so I've done five reps here, or 10 reps here. Now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm actually going to Set my beep down one. This is the spot where I'm working right now. About 0.9 is about where I'm working at right now, about as fast as I can get. So I'm gonna do three, four, five reps here. Yes, but I did not see my dot. My dot was over left. It was acceptable, didn't see it like I wanted. Yes, that was exactly what I wanted it to be there. And I feel like I'm right on that. Okay, 
don't have all the grip that I want on this. It's acceptable, but don't want to end on that. Yes, felt good about that. That was right. One more. Okay, I'm right at it. Right in the midst of that. So I feel pretty good about that. Okay, so now I'm pretty warmed up. That's about as fast as I'm going. But if I want to really kind of tempt myself to move even faster, now I move down. I'm moving at a 0.8 right now. 0.8 is pretty sporty for me. It's a little faster than I'm used to. Some of the highest level shooters that I know, guys like Scott Jedlinski, like Brian Hill, like Gabe White, there are plenty of others who are that fast and then some. But um, you know, uh, this is a little bit more than I'm doing right now. I gotta learn to be a little faster with my hands. But this is what how we get faster, so it's just part of my morning warm-up. Let's do a few. Whew, that's fast. But I feel like I'm there, saw my dot, got a good grip. One of my things here is I want to have my hand on the gun before the beep's over. Hand on the gun before the beep's over. Faster. Whew, I actually double stroked that trigger. Didn't get the trigger like I wanted. Okay, like you see, I'm a little behind. A little behind, probably about a tenth. No, missed that one. Missed that one because I'm starting to pull my t-shirt out here. So let's tuck that back in. You'll have to forgive me. I was just on a cruise ship, so I'm about five or six pounds heavier than I want to be right now. Working on it. No, okay. All right, the wheel's starting to fall off at point eight. You see that happening. Let's try this one more time. Come on, John. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, now guess what? I'm warmed up and as warm as I'm gonna get, so now I can reload my gun and go about my day. Okay, but now we can get a little bit more info. This is actually a cool part of the Mantis X10 and one of the things that I'm really excited about it for is that it has, if you have the X10 unit, which is the new unit, it has an app in here, uh, a, a function called holster draw analysis. Now, unfortunately with the new software, I can't record my screen. When I record my screen, it won't record shots. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like and I'll kind of bring you in to kind of show you some of that. Uh, but it gives you incredible data and gives you all kinds of stuff. So let's kind of see what we're getting at here. It'll give us a little bit more as we get going. Let's go to the train function and holster draw. Let's hear what it does. Holster the firearm. Here we go. Stand by. Got a good shot there, felt everything there. That was really good. It's getting telling me to holster the firearm. It's holstered, now stand by. Okay, good, once again, feel good about that. Let's see what we got here. Be more careful holstering your gun, John. Stand by. Good, felt good about that one. We'll take, easy. One more shot, just so I can get, well, let's do two more. We'll do five shots total. Stand by. Oh, I pushed my shoulder up a little bit on that one. Don't wanna do that, let's try that again. Stand by. Oh, like that one, okay, good. Easy into the holster, John. Bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see what's going on here with this. Let's see if we can kind of get it to see. All right, so this is what the app shows me. And the cool part here is across the top, my average time in seconds to do those three things. What you can see there is I have a 0.33 average of my time to the grip. And then from there, 0.24, or I'm sorry, 0.42 to get the gun horizontal. So that's the gun out and pressed out. 0.09, my average from there to break the shot. So my average here, 
here was 0.84, which actually I'm pretty surprised at. That's pretty fast. So if you look, I am sometimes down around in the in my uh, grip. I am down sometimes 0 0.29, 0 0.32, 0 0.36, 0 0.30 and 0.49, so you can see that. That last one was slow, slowed me down. But I wanna get there under 0.3 as my average, so I'm pretty happy with those first four. Then to draw the gun out a little bit, wow, it takes a little bit more time, but 8.4, 8.6, 8.5, 8.4, 8.3 total, I'm really happy with those, especially because I was seeing my dot like I needed to. So this gives me some really great feedback on how fast I am actually driving the target and how fast I'm actually drive firing. Works in live fire too, but the reason that I like it is, is that it tells me a couple things. In particular here, other than that number five, which was 0.49 seconds to the grip, which was forever for me, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.26, 0 0.3, 2.29, pretty happy with that. Want that under 0.3, really happy with that. Now then, my shot break, which is the delay between when the gun comes out and is holstered and when the gun goes off, 0 0.10, 0 0.09, 0 0.17, 0 0.06, 0 0.04, which means I'm not waiting very long, a tenth of a second or less other than number three to get the shot off, and that is really good, which gives me uh, totals in the 0.8s, which I'm totally happy with. So, daily warm up. That means for me, get your gun unloaded, make sure that everything is cool, you're in your everyday gear, you are in the gear that you're gonna carry that day, you know exactly what you're gonna be wearing that day and carrying it. Then, unload the gun, check it and unload it, and then I wanna do about five minutes worth of work. I'm gonna do five to 10 draws to a shot without any time pressure whatsoever. Then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of time pressure, but less than I can handle. Whatever that is for you, you put for you. Then put the current standard that you're at. For me, that's about 0.9 is what I'm trying to make sure that I'm under all the time. Make about five or 10 of those, and then five or 10 pushing it, going as fast as you can, Ricky Bobby style, a little faster than you can to push yourself to be more efficient. Use videos like this. Uh, you, you can videotape yourself to kind of see where your inefficiencies are, and if you'll do that, you'll be warmed up, ready to go, and you can then get, if God forbid you get in a gunfight, you're not going into it cold. Hope it helps you.